Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed video one. If you haven't seen video one of this series, the first four and a half hours of our training, then please go and find that, watch that, and then we're simply continuing on. So I'll be teaching you and our staff also will be teaching you the fundamentals of hypnotism and then advanced hypnotism studies that I've done over the years. Ericksonian hypnotherapy, when you go into our school, we have a library of over 600 books. I have a very impressive, if I say so myself, Ericksonian collection. So I've really dived deeply into the Erickson style of hypnosis through NLP trainings and directly studying Erickson's works. However, I can honestly say as brilliant as Erickson was, this school doesn't put a huge emphasis on it. His mind was genius. And at the same time, it doesn't mean he was naturally more effective. His style can be more complicated and it's good to study and know about. And I leave it up to you. If you go through this training and you go through our Erickson course and you say, well, I want more, then we have a lot more where that comes from. Uh, but generally the school isn't a primarily Ericksonian school. Core transformation, a technique founded by Connie Ray Andreas. Um, simply, the model there is one question. What would feel even better? It's ridiculously simple. Yet when you apply this idea with your clients, helping them to find their highest intentions, and more importantly, to feel their very best feelings, and deeper than that, to tap into the deepest states of being. When somebody's in what's called the core state, you say, okay, how do you feel now? And they go, pure love. These are words they would use. Love, unconditional love, universal love, pure light, pure joy, pure bliss. I'm like, ah, that's why I got into this profession, right? I wanted to bring people to that state, realizing that state is very valuable. And when I saw this technique and learned it through multiple trainings and different ways of approaching it, including Connie Ray's way directly, uh, it's just extremely powerful. So that's in our training. Eye movement therapy. I've dedicated years to understanding and refining why this works. It works from the hypnosis model. It works from an NLP model. And it's become a major part of our interpersonal hypnotherapy training. Metaphor therapy. Aligned with Ericksonian hypnotherapy, but also is its own thing. Therapeutic stories can be used for children, can be used for people who aren't quite as cognitively functional, somebody who just had a stroke, they can necessarily respond to you, but telling stories with embedded messages can be a way to get some deep emotional resonance in somebody like a child who might not be as responsive to traditional or classical hypnosis. Parts therapy is a way of utilizing different aspects of the mind to, to talk to them and to bring harmony to them. For instance, part of you wants to stop smoking, but part of you wants to keep smoking. When those parts are in conflict, you're obviously not going to succeed. Parts therapy is a powerful way, not the most powerful technique we have, but getting there to resolving conflict so the mind can be one-pointed towards reaching your goals. Parts therapy, unlike hypnotic programming, is an introduction to being able to talk with the subconscious mind. When we do hypnotic programming, we're talking to the subconscious mind. When we do parts therapy, we're talking with the subconscious mind, right? So instead of just saying, you are now an unsmoker, we say, okay, part who's called smoker, why are you smoking, right? What's that all about? Well, I smoke because I'm anxious. Well, we didn't realize that, but we do now because we just talked to that part. And then we can help to transform it using that and other techniques that you can integrate into it. Assertiveness training and high self-esteem type of training becomes a big part of the, you might say, psychology of this work. We're not psychotherapists, we're not psychologists, yet in A Course in Miracles, the question is asked, is psychotherapy a profession? And the answer is, strictly speaking, no, because how could something that everyone is involved with be a separate profession? Now, obviously, that is a profession. Hypnotherapy is its own profession, which we'll talk about in depth as we move along. And there is a psychology to our work, right? We're looking at the mind. Gil Boyne talked about hypnotherapy being a therapy for the people, right? And his vision was to create hypnotherapists as a legitimate occupational title. So there is the psychology of that, 
but we're not claiming to be psychologists. It's like there's a psychology to how you eat dinner, right? Your mind does something. So we'll talk about dealing with mental health conditions, medical conditions, and dental conditions as we move along. That's an important discussion. But for now, realize you're tapping into very powerful mental technologies, but you're not necessarily claiming to be a licensed mental health practitioner. That's a completely different profession. Hypnosis integrates beautifully with that. But again, please remember, you don't have to have that training to do incredibly good work in the field of hypnotherapy. Prosperity training, I've devoured that type of material and the hypnosis material that goes with it, programming your mind to be ever more financially successful. Beyond that is our Life Mastery course. There, what you're learning about is success in every category of your life. It helps you to utilize your mind to be spiritually fulfilled, mentally, emotionally healthy, physically healthy, career and financial success, relationship success, and the other things I mentioned before, travel and vacation, free time and recreation, homes, cars, you know, whatever you want, um, you can move into that. So I've dedicated a lot of time to learning about studying life mastery or self-actualization and helping our students and my clients and students to get there as well. In timeline therapy, the work of Tad James comes usually in NLP trainings, and we touch upon it here. The deeper work that we get into in section three of our training, so this is the first 100 hours, Fundamentals of Hypnotism, advanced is the second 100 hours, and the third 100, so up to 300 hours here is when we get into Gestalt training, the work of Fritz Perls, Gestalt Dialogues, talking to parts therapy goes into it to a degree, Yet in hypnotic regressions, we go a lot deeper. My primary influence mentor, Mr. Gil Boyne, invented a style of hypnotherapy, you'll see in the bottom here, called Boyne's Transforming Therapy. It's a regressive hypnosis model, yet it utilizes Gestalt dialogues. Uh, you want to ask, if you're looking at other hypnotherapy trainings, do you do childhood regressions? Do you do past life regressions? They're two different things and we'll talk about past life regression in a moment. Childhood regression, to me, is crucial, and it's part of what it means to be a hypnotherapist. If you're looking at an association that says, oh, we don't do that, you're only a consulting hypnotist. You're just a hypnotist, not even that. You're just a consulting hypnotist. You're not actually a hypnotherapist. I would encourage you to stay away from that type of thing. Gil Boyne, and through us now, has worked really hard. We've worked really hard to make this a legitimate profession on the federal level, on the state level, on county and city levels, which I'll talk to you more about as we move along. There are very powerful techniques in hypnotherapy, but a lot of trainings will give you minimal exposure to that or no exposure whatsoever. So if you're researching other schools, please, please, please um, review this list and ask them, do you train me in eye movement therapy? Do I learn gestalt? Do I learn transactional analysis? Um, and then how many hours of training? I'll show you our school's catalog as we move along and where you can see this information on our website, right? If somebody says, I train you in regression, well, is it two hours or is it 100 hours, right? Here we're talking 100 hours of learning how to perform hypnotic regressions to childhood. So Gestalt is the dialoguing that occurs with inner child, inner parent, or any other characters we deal with in a regression. Analytical hypnotherapy is the work of E.A. Barnett, and there's very powerful ways of processing that I pulled from that work. Hypnoanalysis, the work of Dave Elman. You'll hear some of Elman's earlier recordings through us and the pioneering work he was doing, but he was regressing people to the root cause of their problems and working to resolve it on that level. But the work was done, uh, I think around the 1960s or so, so it was rather primitive, but it helped to lay the foundation for the work that Mr. Gilboyne and you know now that we are doing in this school. Transactional analysis, the work of Dr. Eric Byrne, dealing with the three major ego states of the psyche, inner parent, inner adult, inner child, and working to bring balance to those. Regression therapy in general, going back to childhood, the focusing technique of Dr. Eugene Gemlin, we're actually teaching in the advanced section. It just ended up on the wrong list. Um, but that's all about getting in touch with how you truly feel in your body. We encourage that as a way to get in touch with your emotions and your core beliefs. It really helps to enhance your hypnotherapy intake and to just simply make you a better practitioner. It's also a really good self-help technique for you to help deal with your own issues. 
forgiveness and compassion work for sure. Uh, I've done a lot of work in the forgiveness realm. Amnesia capacity estimation, learning about depth of hypnosis. We don't just measure hypnosis through relaxation. In fact, it's not even part of the definition of hypnosis. We can measure hypnosis through responsiveness to pain management, to hallucinations. There are a lot of different ways to know if somebody truly in hypnosis. With that said, let's pause from the PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to show you, oh, I don't know how much this is a, well, you know what, here's a shorter one. I have two videos on the side here. One is 43 minutes, one is 20 minutes. Let's start with some of the 20 minute one. This is a graduation party. Uh, for our school where I'm hypnotizing this young woman named Michelle. I skip the part where I'm working with the audience, building audience rapport, figuring out who's going to be the best person to work with. She turned out to be the best person to work with. And let's take some time to watch. I apologize. There's music in the background. Uh, it's not the most professional recording, but I hope you'll really enjoy it, find it entertaining during this time. Let me say, I am trained in stage hypnosis. Uh, Gil Boyne is a stage hypnotist, so that's really important to me to understand, but I'm not a stage hypnotist. I, I like demonstrating it. We do teach some of that in this school. If you want to learn more, you could reach out to me, and we definitely have colleagues who can train you a lot more in stage hypnosis. We're not a stage hypnosis school, and the whole premise of putting somebody on stage and making them do funny things is really not what we're all about, right? This is about healing. This is about enlightenment. This is about empowering people to live their very best lives. Is that nice cliche term is being thrown around living your very best life. So what I encourage you to look at here is not, oh, you know, Matthew is making somebody do funny things. But if I can convince somebody that they have a name different than their own name, that they can't remember the number five anymore, that their hand is now stuck to mine and they can't get it off. What if that same power could be used to say, you're now more happy, you're now more fulfilled, you're now more confident, you're now sleeping better. You can basically program the mind to do anything. So please just consider this a fun example of the incredible power of the mind. So with that said, give me just a moment. Want to work. Let's get the other one here. Um, this is in a classroom in, by the way, this problem is only happening because I don't use Adobe Connect to teach anymore. Um, so this is in a classroom of ours in Orlando, Florida, uh, Renee Brent's location. This was back when we were Florida Institute of Hypnotherapy. And let's watch a bit here with Dorothy. Very fun. Uh, and this is actually of a better quality anyway. So enjoy. show of hands who feels like they feel inspired to come up here and to play along to experience a little bit of hypnosis and I'm going to take the first hand that came up great so a round of applause <laughs> very good or, thank you tell me your name again uh, Dorothy. Dorothy of course good let's be sure we're on camera well Dorothy I think we're looking good Okay, how are you doing? doing well. Great. Are you ready to go into hypnosis? Yes. Okay, I assume you've been hypnotized yeah. before. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, good. We're going to turn just a little bit sideways this way. There you go. So we're good on camera. And take just a gentle step back. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. Have you ever been hypnotized standing up? Okay, so just know your legs stay strong beneath you, and you can go into hypnotic sleep standing up. So even when I say sleep, that doesn't mean that you have to fall over. And just know that even if you feel that I in towards me, that I got you. Okay? Take a gentle step forward. Put both feet together. Your arms are down by your side. Good. I'd like you to look right up here into my left eye. Focus right here as if nothing else matters. Good. Keep staring at my left eye. Let your eyelids start to get heavy. Droopy. Drowsy and sleepy. Focus right here. Take a big breath in now. Fill your lungs. Exhale. Think to yourself. Sleep. Now. That's right. Take another big breath in. Fill your lungs. Exhale. Think. Sleep. Now. Good. Keep focusing right here. Once again, breathe in. Fill your lungs. 
exhale, sleep. Now, I'll count from five to one. When I get to one, your eyes will close. You drop into a deep hypnotic sleep. I've got your five. Focus right here. Four. Legs are strong beneath you. Three. You can sleep standing up. Next time you blink, that's if is coming on. Three, two, one. Sleep! And turn loose and let go. Good. I got you. Is that rock your head? Let me do all the work. Good. Just let go. Every muscle, nerve, and fiber going loose, limp, and relax. Your legs are strong beneath you. You can sleep standing up. Good. I got you. Deeper, deeper, deeper into hypnotic sleep. Going deeper down, 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 deeper. Let your head rest heavy. I got you here. Good. Let both arms be very heavy, just like loose, limp rag dolls. Give me all the weight to this arm. When I drop it, let it be loose, limp, and relax. It'll plop right down to your side. You go three times deeper into hypnosis. Legs stay strong beneath you. Three, two, one, sleep. Now, try it. I got you. Good. When I drop your right arm, give me all the weight. Now, when I drop it, you go three times deeper than you are now. Three, two, one, and sleep. Now, try it. Good. Doubling your level of relaxation. Listen to my voice. Listen only to my voice. In this hand is a piece of chalk, as if you're holding a piece of chalk. In front of you is a chalkboard. Make that hand, that arm a little bit stronger, because you're going to start drawing circles now, moving and spinning and turning. Drawing circles, moving and spinning and turning. Good. Keep moving that arm, spinning and turning. Let it keep moving and spinning and turning. Imagine you're drawing circles on that chalkboard. When I let go of your hand, it keeps moving all by itself. Then try to keep going, moving and spinning and turning, moving and spinning and turning. As your arm keeps moving, you go deeper. As your arm is moving, you go deeper. You can try to stop your arm. You'll find it keeps moving, spinning, and turning. Trying to stop it, it just keeps moving and spinning and turning. When I snap my fingers, it instantly switches directions now. Moving and spinning and turning, moving and spinning and turning. Any effort to stop it makes it go even faster. Any effort to stop it makes it go even faster. You can try to stop it, but find it just moves faster and faster. Trying to stop it, it goes faster and faster. When I snap my fingers, it drops loose and them to your side. You go three times deeper into the hypnotic state. Three, two, one, sleep. Now, your legs are strong beneath you, going deeper, deeper within. I'm going to help you to stand up. You stay in this deep state. You continue going deeper. Legs are strong beneath you. Good. You're taking some weight off of me. Legs are strong beneath you. You got it. Good. I'm going to take your hands and interlace them together. Interlace your fingers. Good. Like you know, make your arms nice and straight. Squeeze these fingers together. Lock your arms up tight. Solid, straight, and rigid. Good. As I come around here, I got you. You let your head come back a little bit. Imagine your arms are solid, stiff, straight, and rigid, as if they are fused out of one solid block of wood. Your arms and hands are now fused out of solid block of wood. Any effort to pull your fingers apart makes those hands lock down even tighter. Any effort to pull your fingers apart makes those hands lock down even tighter. You can try to pull them apart. It find them locking down tight. Trying to pull them apart, find them locking down tight. When you're convinced they're just not going to pull apart, just nod your head yes. Good, when I snap my fingers, they drop loose and them to your side. Good, I got gotcha. you. And you can go deeper and deeper within. Take your hands now, you're going to lift them up like this, and start turning them around. They start moving around like this, moving and spinning and turning. When I let go, they're going to keep moving by themselves. Moving, spinning, turning, moving, spinning, turning. They're moving by themselves now, moving and spinning and turning. When I let go, they keep moving now, moving. Spinning and turning, moving and spinning and turning. Any effort to stop your hands makes them move even faster. Any effort to stop your hands makes them move even faster. You can try to stop your hands, but finally keep moving even faster. I'm trying to stop them, just find them moving even faster. When I snap my fingers, they switch directions. Good. Switch directions, they're moving and spinning and turning. You're going deeper and deeper into hypnotic sleep as your legs stay strong beneath you. When I snap my fingers, your arms will drop loose and limp to your lap. However, any effort to stop them now makes them move even faster. So you can try to stop them, but finally keep moving faster. <laughs> trying to stop them, they just keep moving faster. When I snap my fingers, they drop loose and then to your left. Three, two, one, and sleep now. That's right, I got you. Deeper and deeper. Sleep as I rock your head. You're dropping into a very, very deep hypnotic sleep. And of course, you hear my words, and your legs are staying strong beneath you. Your legs stay strong beneath you. I'm going to tilt your head back. As your head goes back, I'm going to gently touch the space right between your eyebrows as I do. Your eyelids are locking down tightly closed. Your eyelids are now sealed down tightly closed. Your eyelids are now sealed down tightly closed. Any effort to open your eyes causes them to lock down even tighter. Any effort to open your eyes causes them to seal down tightly shut. You can try to open your eyes, you'll find they lock down tighter. Trying to open your eyes, find they seal down shut. When you're convinced you're not going to open, simply nod your head yes.
Good one. I snap my fingers, turn loose, stop trying, gotcha. And you go deeper and deeper within. In just a moment, I'm going to lift this arm. When I do, I'll have you make a fist with your hand at that moment. Your left arm will become straight, solid, stiff and rigid like a steel bar. As I lift it up, it locks up tight, solid, straight, stiff and rigid. Good. With the fist with your hand, when I let go, it gets even tighter. Locked down like a branch of a tree. Solid, straight, stiff and rigid. Any effort to bend your arm makes it lock down even tighter. Any effort to bend your arm makes it lock down even tighter. You can try to bend your arm, you find it locking down even tighter. Trying to bend your arm, find it locks down tight. When you're convinced it's just not going to bend, say aloud, I am satisfied. Mm -hmm. I'm satisfied. Good. When I snap my fingers, it drops loose, send them to your side. You go deeper within, your legs stay strong and beneath you. Three, two, one, sleep. Mm -hmm. That's right. Deeper, deeper asleep. Good. Dorothy, your legs are strong beneath you. I'm going to begin rocking your head. As I do, before I do, I'd like you to imagine in front of you is a long corridor. In front of the corridor is a velvet drape, this long hallway, covered by a velvet drape. In a moment, we're going to start walking down that hallway together. As we do, the number F-I-V-E is going to be completely erasing for our mind. Go ahead and push the velvet drape aside. As we imagine, we start walking through I rock your head. And that number is erasing from your mind. That number is erasing completely from your mind. It's going, it's going, it's fading. We're walking through the other end of the corridor. It's completely forgotten. That number is completely erased from your mind. Any effort to think of that number makes your mind completely blank. Any effort to speak that number makes your throat lock up tight. Any effort to speak that number makes your mind grow blank. Any effort to speak it makes your throat lock up tight. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to three, <coughs> your eyes will open. You'll be standing up. You'll still be in this hypnotic state. One, <coughs> two, three. Legs strong beneath you. Standing up. Good. <coughs> You're doing great. With your eyes open. Yeah. All right. How you doing? Good. Good. Have fun? Yeah. <coughs> Excellent. What I'd like you to do is lift your hand, please. You're going to take this finger. Start counting here. One, two, three, four on your fingers. So actually, I'm confusing you. We'll use this finger. Start counting here. One, two, three, four. When you finish counting in this hand, you're going to switch to the other. So you'll be counting all your fingers. One, two, three. And then you do it this way. So you can begin out loud using this finger. Start counting here. One, two, three, four, one. Okay. I'll try, try it on that one. Go ahead. Two. Mm -hmm. Three. Three. Four. Four. What's the next number? One. One. Hmm. Seems like something's odd. Let me try it on this hand again. Use this finger. Start counting. One, two. One. You're doing fine. Good. Mm -hmm. Two. Three. Mm-hmm. Four. Okay. One second. Six. Six. Sure. And then start using this finger to start counting on that thing. Because you're counting all the total number One, of fingers. Two. Three. Four. Six. Six. What is six plus six? Well, how many fingers are you supposed to have? Ten. Ten. You counted twelve. Does that seem odd? Yeah. Yeah? What's, you can rest your hands if you like, just check in with me for a moment. What's, what's one plus one? Two. Two. What's two plus two? Four. Four. Exactly. What's three plus three? Six. Six. And what's two plus three? Six plus six? What's six plus six? Uh, Twelve. Oh, right. And what is two plus three? Six. Six. Makes sense, right? Look at me. 
Sleep! <laughs> okay. Then turn loose and let go. So rock your head. I'll do all the work. Go deeper, 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 deeper. Let's sleep. Good. Now, listen to me very carefully. Listening to me, listen to me only to my voice. In a moment, I'm going to roll your head. When I do the letter P, it's completely erasing from your mind. As I rock your head, the letter P is erasing from your mind. Any effort to think it makes your mind completely blank. Any effort to speak it makes your throat lock up tight. Any effort to think it makes your mind completely blank. That letter is completely erased from your mind. To try to even get it through your lip just doesn't work. You'll just find you cannot speak that letter to save your life. Any time you have to speak it makes your throat just lock up tight. It's going, it's going, it's fading, it's completely gone. On a count to three, legs are strong beneath you. You stand up again. One, two, three. That's right. You can stand up. Good. You're doing fine. Excellent. Okay. Good. So you can open your eyes. Great. Once again, how are we doing? Good. Good. What's well, one plus one? Two. Two. And two plus two? Four. And uh, three plus three? Six. Six. And two plus three? You can try it in your hands again, sure. You can Six. Six. So. 3 plus 3 is 6, 2 plus 3 is 6. Something seems a little wrong, but that's okay. <coughs> now, what is your name again? Dorothy. Dorothy. Excellent. Dorothy, repeat after me. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Some, go ahead. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. <coughs> Mm, that's tricky. Sometimes when you go to an Italian <coughs> restaurant, there's lots of wonderful meals that people yeah. like. What's, what's one of your favorites? Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Uh-huh. That's good. Yeah. What's that round thing called? You know, thin round thing. They throw it up, put cheese on it and everything. You know, that round thing that cut into little sections, we ordered from places like Domino's and whatnot. What's that thing called? Okay. I, I don't Yeah, that's I'd, Yeah, that, that one's that one's tricky too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Just look at me again. Once again. Sleep! Mm -hmm. Turn this and let go. Go deeper, deeper, and deeper within. Good. Now, in a moment, I'll rock your head again, and when I do, you're completely forgetting your name. It's going, it's fading, it's fading, it's fading. Any effort to think of your name makes your mind completely blank. Any effort to speak it makes your throat lock up tight. That name is completely fading from your mind. It's going, it's going, it's going, it's going, and it's gone. Now, because you've forgotten your name, I'm going to give you a new name. Your new name is Barbara Walters. Anytime someone asks you what your name is, it's clearly Barbara Walters. You know this to the depth of your being. You've had it through your entire life. Of course, your name is Barbara Walters. You know it to the very essence and fiber of your being. <coughs> when I count to three, that's completely locked in. Your legs will be strong beneath you. You'll stand up. One, two, three. That's right. Legs strong beneath you. Standing up. Eyes open. Great. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. You're doing great. Excellent. Okay. So, once again, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. <laughs> Just uh, not, not happening, huh? You're laughing at me. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not laughing near you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's, it's odd, though. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, so Peter, just repeat after me. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. OK, I know that's tricky. So we've had some trouble with numbers. Uh, but I'm just going to ask you to turn to the group for a moment. Good. So everybody here, love to you. looking at you, smiling at you. Hi. Excellent. Let's ask, uh, so, you know, we've been doing this <laughs> hypnosis demonstration. Uh, let me ask you, ma'am, um, do you feel you're hypnotized? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Well, I imagine you might feel that way. Uh, do you guys have any questions for our class? What's your name? What's your name? What is your name? Barbara. Barbara what? Walters. Nice to meet you, Barbara. Nice to meet you. Hi, Barbara. 
Yeah, Barbara Walters. That yeah. sounds like um, someone famous. Yeah, famous. For sure. Mm -hmm. How long have you had that name? 66 years. 66 years. Uh-huh. How old are you? 66. 66. Yeah. How old were you 11 years ago? That's okay. It's going to be confusing questions like that. And um, let me ask you, Barbara, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm retired. You're retired. Okay, excellent. Good, good. All right. So, Barbara, have you ever heard of the concept of personal magnetism? And somebody's like yes. drawn to you yes. or something? Okay, I can take your hand here, put it on top of mine. Your hand is now locked down in mine. Any effort to pull it apart makes the lockdown even tighter. Any effort to pull that off just makes the lockdown even tighter. Good. So as we're sitting here talking, we've been talking about hands, we've been talking about hypnotizability, we've been talking about numbers, and we're just going to kind of go over here for a moment. I'll bring it back over here. This is actually the school's logo. Want to see something really neat? Yeah. The wall is similar to my hand, so when uh -huh. I touch it, it releases. Your hand is now magnetized and stuck to the wall. Any effort to pull it off makes it even tighter. Any effort to pull your hand off the wall makes it lock down tighter. It's going to feel like the strongest mag magnet you can imagine when I release my hand. Your hand is now stuck to the wall. Go ahead and try to pull it off. And All right, we're going to put that to the side for a moment. We got 20, less than 20 minutes on that, so we can come back to it. And we can get the camera back on. All right, great. All right, I hope you found that fun, entertaining, interesting. I hope you don't find that offensive. Um, it's fun to play that way, but in real clinical hypnotherapy, we're not doing that. We don't hypnotize our clients standing up. We're not laughing at them or near them, <laughs> all right? Um, but what you're seeing there, as I mentioned before we watch the video, is an opportunity to realize the mind is that powerful. If it could be that diluted, if you cannot know the number five, right, just how brilliant could you actually be? So I would do those as demonstrations for our classes or graduations, but again, we don't do that with our clients. I just hope you found that entertaining. Um, but let's talk about, was she hypnotized? Well, she said she was, it looked like she was, but what, why, why is she hypnotized? She wasn't necessarily, I mean, she was relaxed, but she was standing up. Hypnosis, remember, is not relaxation, although you can hypnotize someone and tell them to relax, right? But you can hypnotize someone and tell them to be stressed, right? You can hypnotize someone, getting them into a state where they're more responsive to your suggestions. So again, hypnosis is measured by responsiveness to suggestion. And what you saw in that video was a hypnotic induction, deepening the state, and then testing for the state through multiple tests that are very intentionally put in that order. Right? We don't ask her to forget her name right away. We build up to that and you'll learn all about those stages of hypnosis as you go through. Once you know how to get somebody into the right state of mind, then you can help them with whatever you want, right? Hypnosis for childbirth, hypnosis for dentistry, past life regression. There are countless opportunities of how we use this state, what we do when someone's in the state, and of course we have to get good at putting them in. Most of your clients, of course, are going to be doing this in a comfortable recliner, you know, on a couch, and they're going to be very deeply relaxed. Then you start utilizing techniques like we're looking at on the screen here. I will go into the next slide as well, um, where you're going to be working to transform their lives in this state. Okay, so other things I've studied since 1996, and that actually breath work was even before that. Um, and then I want you to know you'll be learning in the school. So breath work, I started learning Kripala Yoga Ashram and then I continued education in rebirthing for that. Um, breath work is a very powerful way of moving enormous amounts of energy in your body and essentially whatever's blocked comes up. So as I said, this is about removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence to bringing, to opening you to all the joy and all the amazing feelings inside of you. But breath work can show you the things you don't want to see, right? The suppressed anger, the fear, the sadness, all the tears that a lot of people hold inside. It's a powerful way when you or your client is ready to help to clear out a lot of that pain. If you've been looking for the technique that, oh, we're just finally getting me through this one thing, then that could very much be it. 
Um, very generally, we spend this time talking about clinical and medical hypnotherapy, working in medical settings, working with physicians, getting referrals from physicians, even working in hospitals. We have graduates who are working at the VA, uh, who work with the Department of Health. So there's incredible opportunities there. Specifically, we go into a lot of pain management during that. You'll see different videos of like a thyroid, thyroidectomy done with only the use of hypnosis, hernia operation, only hypnosis, root canal, only hypnosis. The mind can absolutely cut off all sensations in the body and you get to learn how to do that yourself. So the day that you're having a bad headache, you're like, let me go into hypnosis. I'll induce what's called glove anesthesia. I'll make my hand numb and then I'll numb my head. Once you learn how to do that, it's yours for the rest of your life to use anytime you may want to. Like I mentioned, we go into intuitive and psychic development in this section. Uh, yet, as I did mention, we have three different videos with Mary Hayes and then a video with me in the clinical section talking about how to be intuitive, deeply intuitive with your clients. We cover energy medicine because of my background in Chinese medicine and how the energy body, that which we're working with in acupuncture essentially, is related to your emotions. One of the deal breakers for me about becoming a doctor of oriental medicine were the very in-depth discussions in Chinese medicine about emotions, right? That anger affects the liver. Fear affects the kidneys. Anxiety or excessive joy, which is interesting, uh, affects the heart. Worry affects the spleen stomach system. Uh, all of these different organ systems are affected by our emotions. Yet, what can we really do in energy medicine that truly deal with the emotions? Unfortunately, actually, not that much compared to what we can do in hypnotherapy, because in hypnotherapy, we're dealing directly with the mind. And the mind is what's causing our emotions, which does affect our physiology. So by healing the mind, we're able to make major change in the body. And that's primarily why I got into hypnotherapy instead of acupuncture. With all due respect to any profession or healing modality, hypnotherapy helps us to deal with the level that acupuncture actually really wants us to. For instance, in the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Chinese Medicine, one of the classical texts of acupuncture, it says the lower level physician heals on the bodily level. The mid-level physician heals on the energy level. The most advanced physician heals on the spiritual mental level. Like, well, how do I do that? <laughs> and it was actually hypnotherapy that helped me to do that, not acupuncture. There was a book I read in Chinese medical college called Rooted in Spirit. It said all healing must be rooted in spirit. But I never really felt that acupuncture could connect as deeply to someone else's soul, their mind, you know, their deep inner being, the way that hypnotherapy can. Um, because of that, I started studying psychoneuroimmunology or psychoneurophysiology. The idea is scientific research, advanced, you know, very well documented scientific research about the brain-mind-body connection and techniques that are used and proven to be able to help to heal the mind, to heal the body. So we have a nice solid section on that along with anatomy physiology training. That might sound kind of dull, but we go into a lot of the energy components there. So the chakras, the meridian system, the aura, understanding what's called the order manifestation, how and why illness manifests in a more metaphysical approach. So we look at it very much on the physical level, you know, pure Western anatomy, and we look at it more on the Eastern anatomy model as well. Natal regression, to enhance the regression training, we teach you how to regress people to perinatal memories, times of or related to the birth experience. And quite often, not, let me not say quite often, but sometimes, the root cause of our problem actually goes back to pre-verbal memories beyond what we can even remember. And what you learn in fundamentals of hypnotism all through our first 300 hours doesn't necessarily focus on those deeper places. So in clinical training, we teach you how to access pre-verbal memories. Um, finding there can be really significant healing there. Hypnosis for dentistry, hypnosis for childbirth, Christian science, science of mind, and the new thought movement. There are significant miracles that have been well documented in the Christian science religion. And as a hypnotherapist, religious scholar, NLP practitioner, I just wanted to know how are they doing it. People are obviously healing. Is it placebo effect? Is it prayer? Is it the power of God? Like what's actually healing people?
you know, when we look at faith healing in a Christian type of scenario, right, somebody goes in and there's a preacher and they put their hand on the head, it's very similar to what you just saw in the video with Dorothy. They're putting you into altered states, they're giving you suggestions. The only thing really missing in the hypnosis model, but you can add it in if you want, is faith, right? Classical clinical hypnotherapy, we don't have to go to theistic or spiritual themes at all. But a lot of us are very interested in that. And I approach that from the point of view of how is it working? Why is it working? So I've studied that in depth. I've diluted a lot of those teachings down to things that you guys can study in the school that's not overwhelming. It's not you know, hundreds and hundreds of pages, but just about four pages in our training manuals that speaks to the power of the mind coming from that perspective. Okay, then once we get into the deeper, deeper transpersonal stuff, we have in-depth training in past life regression and life between life regression. I've studied the works of Brian Weiss, Dr. Brian Weiss, and Dr. Michael Newton. Um, they're both wonderful people, and even though I'm not as famous as them, I'm going to say our past life regression therapy protocol is what I stick to. I don't stick to their teachings. What I brought to the table here is after years of living in ashrams and monasteries in India and studying this stuff in depth. Um, and creating a past life protocol that really transforms people's lives. The life between life regression, after we review a past life, then we can review what happens afterwards. And it's fascinating material if you haven't read the works of Dr. Brian Weiss. I'm sorry, um, that's Dr. Michael Newton who does more of the life between life work. As far as is that stuff real, do you need to have that training? I can tell you it's absolutely real. Some of the past life regressions could just be a metaphorical journey. The subconscious can dream, it can create, it can imagine, it can have emotion. It can make up a lot of stuff. It doesn't know fact or fiction. It doesn't mean that this is proof of reincarnation, but I do offer some very compelling videos during the training of regressing someone to a past life. Um, researching the information that they came up with and actually finding out, wow, it was true. So maybe it's real, maybe it's not. But the point is, when you regress a client to the cause of their problems, if they are screaming that they're being tortured and it's not in this lifetime, what do you do as a hypnotherapist? You can't tell them you don't believe in that stuff. You have to be trained in how to deal with that when it emerges. The same is true of topics like on the screen here, alien abduction and entity releasement. You don't have to believe in aliens or entities that latch on to people's aura, but when your client tells you they're an alien abductee, you better know how to deal with that, right? Or you could refer them out. When they say they feel like there's some entity latched on to their being, that there's someone in their mind and it's not them, right? And it's clearly, you know, the best of our ability to discern, it's not dissociative identity disorder, it's not multiple personality disorder, they legitimately are a healthy person who says there's someone else in their being. That will come up in a hypnotherapy practice from time to time. Some people experience it more than others in their practice. But you need to know how to deal with it for sure. Um, so even if you feel like, well, I like all this, I'm not quite really into all the spiritual stuff, realize a lot of your clients are. And there might be a lot more than depending where you're at in your life and in your journey. Maybe there's more going on, even though you might say, I don't believe in that. I would just say, maybe you're wrong, <laughs> right? Maybe there are other ways of looking at life that we haven't tapped into yet. So in the clinical training, we definitely get into the science of things and some metaphysics. In transpersonal, it's 100 hours of just spiritual teachings. That goes into astral projection, out-of-body experiences remote viewing, perceiving information in a non-local universe, meaning you can tap into what's happening in your brother's house 500 miles away, and then go and confirm that you actually were able to do it. Now, uh, what is the practical application out of body experience in remote viewing? Well, you can teach workshops on a lot of this stuff. So I used to do workshops on astral projection. And in a workshop, you can charge even $100 a person, get 10 people in the room, do that for an afternoon, walk away with $1,000 for the afternoon, charge more, get more people, you know, you could do the math. So it's nice for workshops. Some clients actually want to learn it. Teaching classes is a great thing for you to get more clients. And we're just a comprehensive hypnotherapy training. So you can use hypnosis to invoke out-of-body experiences or astral projection uh, and remote viewing, which the CIA, the Army, the government's used for decades. So um, there's practical application to it if you decide you want to get into it. 
Because of my background, we go into understanding stages of spiritual growth, where is your client at, and what actually can happen next for them to help them to progress in their journey. I'm living in India. I've studied in depth yogic philosophy and psychology. How do the yogis see the mind, and how do they help to heal the mind and free us from psychosis, you know, from mental disturbance? There's very powerful teachings there. Very in depth teachings on karma and reincarnation. The idea of the oversoul. There are different models of past lives that you want to understand because it's not always as simple as linear reincarnation. We have the idea of a holographic universe, a multiverse, that time and space are not linear, that you're not necessarily only reincarnating in the human realm. Some people believe that you've been in plant and animal form before this. So what if your client regresses back and they claim they were a horse? Right? You, know, you need to be trained for that and there's different theories that explain it. And the Oversoul Theory talks about how multiple realities are occurring simultaneously in the past life regression that seems like we're going to the past is actually just going into an alternative universe. Whether that's true or not, you know, that'll be up to you to decide, and maybe none of us really know. However, the theories, and you'll see it is a theory, helps to explain a lot of phenomena that comes up when you're doing transpersonal hypnotherapy. We deal with higher work with higher self and spirit guides. A lot of you will be very into after the past life regression, talking to guides, and angels, and non-physical beings of all sorts. And there's definitely a lot of place for that in this school. And then the deep meditation teachings and yogic practice known as samadhi, uh, we cover quite deeply and yet really where you're going to learn it with me is on the OnlineMonastery.com website where I offer the additional 100 hours with very in-depth teachings about Samadhi. Alright, moving on and then by the way we'll come back to the Dorothy video for entertainment and more education later on. We also have a video of the IAIH conference. But for now let's just spend a little more time learning about the journey here. So quickly, because you don't need much more history at this point, I began the school, well actually this suite here, suite 36, was in Gainesville, Florida. Um, I had my practice in West Stockbridge, Massachusetts, Delray Beach, Florida, and then here in Gainesville, Florida. I did this around 2005 for a year, it was very successful, so I expanded to the suite next door. I uh, had a holistic health center, we published our own magazine, and it was really thriving. I had people working for me there, I was seeing a full client load, and then I decided, alright, it's time to really expand into my next thing. And after a lot of reflection, I realized, you know, hypnotherapy school is the best way for me to get my teachings, my life's work out there. So this is back in, I think this is 2008, this magazine where we were on the cover, which was nice. And then me in a suit that was too big for me um, <laughs> was, yeah, this is in the back of it. Anyway, you don't need to know much more, but that's where we began in Gainesville, Florida, 2007. We became the first state licensed school through the Department of Education's Commission for Independent Education to offer legitimate credentials in the field of hypnotherapy with actual state licensed diplomas. We moved to Tampa, Florida. We're in a not so great building at first, but eventually we ended up in the building to the left here, which is one Tampa City Center. Most of the videos you watch in the school were made while I was working out of there, and the very top was like the 34th floor. It was an incredible view. It was very prestigious. We did some of our trainings there, but parking was bad for students. Air conditioning wasn't good on the weekends. Uh, you had to go through security on the weekends, and it was just too hard for students, even though I loved it, and it really helped me to feel, I think our whole team was like, wow, like we made it, like we're really doing good work, um, people are loving this training, we're really you know, at the top of our game, it just wasn't a good campus for the students. So I moved it to where it is now, the building on the right is one building in that complex uh, in Tampa, Florida, that's where the headquarters is. However, our training is available in all 50 states. We have locations in other states, but our training is also available 100% online. So we're not really a Florida school. Personally, I live in California. Uh, Danny Fox, our COO, is in North Carolina. Um, Andrew is in Salt Lake City. So we've got people all over the place. We really are a nationwide presence now, uh, even though the corporate headquarters, because a state licensed school needs to have such a thing, uh, is in Tampa, Florida. Okay, um, I talked about some of my background, yet by far the most influential is Mr. Gilboy, the founder of the American Council of Hypnotist Examiners. 
That's the ACHE. We're no longer an ACHE school. Um, when Gil was in his later years, this, this picture is actually what I like to call the last supper or the last lunch. After my first graduating class, the first class I graduated in 2007, a lot of my graduates wanted to meet Gil. So we went out to California at a conference. I asked Gil, you know, could you have lunch with our students so they can get to meet you? And it was so much fun. He was hypnotizing our students and uh, really great. Um, but that was the last time that I got to see him before he moved to England and then ended up passing away. After he passed away, his organization really didn't have any strong leadership. The conferences stopped, CEUs, Continuing Education Unit stopped. Um, they, I mean, not that they stopped, but nothing new was really being produced. So we, at some point, just made an executive decision. We're going to do our own association. We'll become the IAIH, the International Association of Interpersonal Hypnotherapists. And I feel like I'm standing on the shoulder of a giant here. Uh, my respect is very deep for Mr. Boyne. At the same time, after he passed away, well, before he passed, I said to him, who's going to take care of the law and legislative work now that you're gone? And I said, you can hand the torch over to me if you want. But he never really did that. But he did help me to get the school started. Um, and then I decided, all right, I'm just going to take the reins. So the ACHA is actually a really reputable and good organization now. Um, we're just not associated with any other association now because we decided I think we can just do the best job we can by doing it on our own. Um, last about me and then we're going to move on from that. Uh, when I'm not running the school, I'm a very avid paraglider. I've flown all over the world, Brazil, Costa Rica, Colombia, Peru. Uh, I got to fly over the Machu Picchu area, the Sacred Valley, outside of Cusco, Peru at 13,000 feet. I live near a paragliding launch in California. So that's just you know, a little bit about me with that. Um, archery, I like that, Zen archery specifically, although not formally. Uh, it's my travel trailer and kayak and mountain bike, so very avid uh, in the traveling department. Uh, I'm into cars, even though environmentally not as friendly anymore, so more electric, but also off-roading. Kayaking, super fun. I love Winnie the Pooh. This is actually our first school location in Gainesville, Florida, back in, oh, that would be... 2007, 2008 or so, and obviously very into yoga. Uh, I still can probably do that to this day. <laughs> All right, so hopefully that's it from about me. Let's focus on you and this education for you. All right, um, oh, one more thing. <laughs> so the person who helped me to compile these wrote that I've had a fascinating career. During our school's training in transpersonal, you'll be introduced very you know, briefly to what's called the Star Child Project. You can Google it. It's complete now. Um, the project is complete, so it's not active anymore. Mr. Lloyd Pye, you'll see in the screen, they're also someone who's passed away, uh, who is a dear friend and colleague of mine. Uh, I watched a video of Lloyd's called Everything You Think You Know Is Wrong. And he was talking about Bigfoot and, you know, he's... Um, things that not everybody's into and believes in, but he was a big believer that what we're hearing in the mainstream scientific community is not accurate. There's other versions of history. So people like Ancient Aliens and some of that stuff, you know, would be familiar with this. And he was actually, I believe he was on Ancient Aliens and other shows like that. I made a donation because Lloyd was saying that there's the skull that he's in possession of that is 900 years old. It looks like an alien. The DNA looks like it's an alien. Everything looks like it's an alien. He said if we could just prove it, it would be the first proof of alien life. And I'm like, I want in. If this is the first proof of aliens, because I've had clients who have claimed to be abductees, I'm like, this would say, this is like finding the uh, continental United States. It's like, you know, Christopher Columbus type of stuff, or Neil Armstrong, man on the moon kind of stuff. I'm like, I'll be that person. If I could be the person who helps to prove alien life. So uh, I made a donation. Lloyd thought it was a nice donation, so he reached out to me personally. He came to visit me at that skyscraper I just showed you, and he actually brought the skull. There are two skulls, one that looks human, one that's not, and or one that doesn't look human. Uh, I did an in-depth interview with him, which is part of our school's training. And then Melanie Young, who is the original owner of the skull, uh, I did an interview with her, and she actually claims to be an alien abductee and also was the original owner of the skull. As a somewhat accomplished business person, they asked me if I would help to fulfill the project, and I believe I can do, use my mind to do anything. Excuse me. So I said, within two years, we're going to prove if this is alien or not. And we did. Within two years, we proved basically it was not alien. 
that might not be true, but uh, we had a Russian geneticist on the team, which was super fun, and we had one tooth left of the star child skull. I managed to convince him, let's give it up to this certain scientific research. Um, they did extract the DNA from that tooth, which is the most pristine DNA we could find, and that proved that, or essentially proved, that maybe didn't prove, but you know, science is science kind of. So we basically proved that the DNA from the father and the mother came from the Mexico area where the skull was found, and it's just a very strange thing. So it's only about two hours of our transpersonal training, but those of you who are interested in the alien topic, I hope you'll find this fascinating to hear what Lloyd says all about this and the topic. Uh, those of you who know Whitley Strieber, his book Communion, uh, and there's a movie, Communion. I got to be on one of Whitney's radio shows. Um, when Lloyd was passing away, he had cancer, and he said, okay, Matthew, I'm giving you the skulls and the replica skulls. I, I was already keeping the skulls in a bank vault in Tampa, and he, but he gave me the replicas. He said, the replicas are what we use, you know, the lecture about this. He said, you're at the head of the spear now. So I started lecturing and getting on the radio and meeting really big names in the field. Um, and then we concluded the project. Um, other people came on board, not to go into other names and details, uh, so I don't deserve all the credit, but using the power of the mind, I was like, we can do this. And we did. It was very expensive. It was a lot of work. Uh, I definitely risked my reputation, but if it was really early, then that would have been significant. So you might find that entertaining at the very end of our training in Transpersonal. Uh, and you can Google more about that if you're interested now. All right, with that said, what's next here? Moving on. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about hypnosis and meditation, and if you're new to this, you might not know the difference. And you might, if you do know uh, about these topics, you might want to know what is my take on it. How do we approach this with the school? There are similarities and there's differences, and it depends on what style of hypnosis and what style of meditation. Generally, we define hypnosis is a natural yet altered state of mind where there's a high degree of responsiveness or really any degree of responsiveness with the subconscious mind. With hypnosis, the way we like to define it, and you heard that in one of the videos before about discovering your life's purpose, she was talking about meditation and she said meditation is essentially what you put your attention upon. And she said what you put your attention upon increases, right, if you're focusing more and more on poor health, next thing you know you're feeling bad, right? So there are definitely similarities. In hypnosis I could say focus on my eye, right? And in meditation I could say focus on your breath. The idea of focusing or fixation is a big part of this. An altered state is a big part of this. The way I would say that they're different though is that hypnosis quite often in the model of what's called a hetero hypnosis, meaning someone else hypnotizes you. Right, when I hypnotize you and put you into the state of hypnosis, I'm getting your mind to be more receptive to taking my suggestions. I can offer positive programming, but deeper than that, we can do hypnotherapy where we're talking directly with the subconscious mind. In parts therapy, in regression therapy, in past life regression therapy, we can get to the root cause of a problem and transform it. With meditation, uh, and hypnosis can be done, as you know, we said, there is self-hypnosis. You can hypnotize yourself, you can use recordings to hypnotize yourself. Of course, with meditation, you can meditate by yourself, or others can direct you in meditation. The difference, though, is that in the hypnosis field, we go back to the mid-1700s, when a man named Franz Anton Mesmer, right, mesmerism, um, with animal magnetism, he was pioneering a lot of this work, and in the history of hypnosis lecture, you hear a lot more about Mesmer. The point is, this field is only about 250 years old. The meditative disciplines are thousands of years old. The rabbit hole with meditation goes a lot deeper. So if you want to explore very deep altered states, states in yoga that I've mentioned, the term samadhi, states of oneness consciousness, the movement into self-realization, um, what the great saints and sages you know, have tapped into, those teachings come about beautifully in meditation and in the deeper spiritual disciplines. So with hypnosis in this school, we're focusing more on classical hypnosis, advanced hypnotism training, hypnotic regressions. In clinical training, we're still talking a lot about 
the medical and scientific side of things. And then even when we get to transpersonal, we're still talking about utilizing hypnotherapy for things like past life regression. When, if you want to go even deeper than that after our first 500 hours of training, as I mentioned, let's see what the next slide is, we have, uh, the, that's not it, but we have the next 100 hours of onlinemonastery.com training. Again, that's totally free. It's my desire to share information with you that I think is going to be extremely valuable. If you're like, I'm not quite sure how far I want to go with this, I encourage you to check out our website, instituteofhypnotherapy.com. In the school store, there's this continuing education course. You don't need the pointer here, but I was moving my cursor. So, self hypnosis and meditation. It's an eight hour CEU course. In our association, you need 30 hours of continuing education every two years to maintain your certification. So, this eight hour course can be part of that. But if you're not quite sure, it's only $99 at the time of this recording. It's eight hours. It'll teach you all about self-hypnosis to put yourself into hypnosis. And then I'll teach you about deeper meditation. And there you'll see the difference between hypnosis and meditation and the similarities. So there's a nice way to get your feet wet without having to commit to a 500-hour training. Next, higher self-based hypnotherapy training. On the OnlineMonastery.com website, I have some free um, a lecture and meditations on higher consciousness. The idea is that we're more than just bodies, right? You might say that it's not that you are a human being who can have a spiritual experience. You may have heard this before. Yet you're a spiritual being who is having a human experience. If you're just a human being who can have a spiritual experience, then you're just a body. Yet, if you're a spiritual being having a human experience, then you're spirit. And really, what we can say is lower self is the human, higher self is spirit. What is that, right? Is spirit just a little light that's, you know, when I was like in, I think I was like 10 years old, I was contemplating, what is the soul? I heard about the soul. Is it like a little light that lives inside of me? <laughs> As if I'm the body and I have a little light that lives inside of me? We are, I'm just going to say, I know myself as soul, as spirit. I am a spiritual being, and I'm having a human experience. By putting our attention on that being called spirit, that's where the love is. That's where the light is. That's where the bliss is. That's where the joy is. That's where the wisdom is. That's where you find your purpose. That's where you find your creativity. That's where the healing ability comes from. That's the ability to manifest whatever you want in your life. It all comes from there. So in this training, I want you to know how deep the underlying spirituality is. But in the beginning, we don't go into that. I can just say that Gil Boyd, um, he was once talking about this theme. And he said, "My," he said, your atheism gives you nothing. My belief in God brings me everything. So I won't, and nobody in our school will ever tell you you must believe in God or anything like that. Like nobody's going to be preachy or religious here. However, imagine that yes, you have a body, right? <laughs> Got one of those. You have sensations in the body, feelings in the body. Sometimes those don't feel so good. You have emotions, right? You've got this emotional being. Sometimes those don't feel so good. You have a mind. You also are consciousness. Right? You're conscious. You hear me. You're in there. The real question is, who are you? The idea that there is a higher self or a super conscious mind, something greater than just your conscious mind and your subconscious mind, to know that you have so much more potential than what only a human being can tap into. The human body is limited. Sensations are limited. Emotions are limited. Even your mind can be considered limited. But not when you realize or are open to the idea that your spirit, your consciousness, in A Course in Miracles, mind is the activating agent of spirit. Spirit is consciousness, if you want to pull from that model, and your mind emanates from your consciousness. Are you empowered to know what to do with your mind? Do you know how to think? Do you know how to structure your mind for success, for health, for happiness? For healthy relationships. It all begins with learning about your mind and I'm always encouraging realize there's even something 
deeper, more profound, more sacred, more beautiful than even your conscious mind as you might be aware of it now. So the deeper you go down the rabbit hole with this stuff, the more fulfilling, the more joyful. It doesn't matter what words we use, and again, nobody's being preachy here, yet my mission is to help you to feel all the love that's inside of you, to really find what true inner peace is. And if we want to use the word spirit for that, I hope you'll be okay. But really, if the word spirit and the word peace are synonymous, then I'm saying, I just want to help you to know peace. And if prosperity emanates from somebody who's in touch with their pure potentiality, um, then I want you to be successful. Remember, my core mission is to help the world to become healthy, wealthy, and enlightened. Right? Not just healthy and broke. <laughs> and in this career, you can make some really good money. Um, and that helps to fulfill my purpose as well. We also do have in-depth medical hypnosis training. We teach you how to get into hospital settings and medical settings. I've worked out of doctor's offices and a psychiatrist's office. There's very, there are very rewarding opportunities in hooking up with medical practitioners. We have a graduate who is getting continual referrals from doctors and psychiatrists. It's not like doctors aren't open to this. They know that they have their benefits, of course, and they know they have their limitations. When you go to your doctor and the doctor says, look, it's stress, here's a medication. They don't want to do that. A lot of doctors want to say, look, it's stress, go get hypnotherapy. I teach you in our training how to do lunch and learns, where you go and present at a physician or dentist's office their staff becomes your client. They're like, oh my God, I didn't know we could do this and I didn't know how much you could help me. And they can refer patients to you. It's a beautiful way of working and you need specialized training in that because there's HIPAA, there's hypnosis law, there's ethics, there's no practice insurance. We cover all of that in the training. And we'll do some screen share most likely in the third video of this four and a half hour introduction where I'll show you a lot of what you need to know not in depth training because this is an introduction, but at least where to research what you need to know, and then we'll cover that later in your training. Um, this is one of our other websites is interpersonalhypnotherapy.com. That's our association website. And here's a one hour plus video me explaining medical hypnotherapy, law, and credentialing. So if you're going to be doing hypnosis eventually, if you're working on medical conditions, mental health conditions, or dental conditions, you must understand the law, or you can get in serious trouble and really do damage to our profession. So I encourage you to check out interpersonalhypnotherapy.com, go to the Advocacy tab, and you'll see a section on Hypnosis Law and Law and Legislative Efforts, and I'll show you that later with some screen share. For now, we also have on our main website, instituteofhypnotherapy.com, 400 plus hours, I think it's closer to 500 hours now, of bonus resources. There are classes that I used to do, I'm not currently doing every Monday night. They are two hours long each, approximately, but most are two hours. And there's um, well over 200 of those. So it's over 400 hours of additional free hypnotherapy training on every topic you can imagine. Here on the screen it says spiritual growth, hypnotherapy, meditation, hypnosis and the paranormal. <coughs> Excuse me, if you go through this training with me, you'll learn about me and cough drops. <coughs> Talking this much seriously helps, so it becomes a little joke throughout the training of Matthew and his Ricolas, um, or Halls or whatever. So anyway, uh, you'll see on the screen here, the topics on this web page um, again, go to instituteofhypnotherapy.com. Underneath the Hypnotherapy Training Courses tab, you'll find the Conscious Community Class Archive, and this is in our school's library as well. Um, meditation, Hypnosis and the Paranormal, Healing and Enlightenment, Finding Inner Peace, Creating Community, A Course in Miracles. So again, hundreds of hours of free training. If your budget is tight and you're not able to really start our training yet, we do have financing available. I'll cover that in another slide. So we made it very affordable to go through this training if you need that kind of assistance. But uh, if you're not ready for that yet, this is a great way to stay connected to us on this specific web page. And again, I'll give you a brief tour of our website and show you where that is. Okay, finding purpose through hypnotherapy. This is where I was supposed to play the video that you saw already. So we covered that. But the idea of 
what is your purpose? What is your mission? What is your dharma? If you don't feel like you're living that yet, then I encourage you to call the school, ask for that recording, and it's free, and just listen to it. And it doesn't mean you have to come to this school. Just find your purpose, and you will feel so much more fulfilled. If you're already found your purpose, like you're already a doctor of oriental medicine, or a massage therapist, or a chiropractor, or an acupuncture physician, I didn't say that already. Uh, anyway, in the caregiving professions, hypnotherapy is an incredible adjunct. So you might not feel lost. You might not feel like you're not on your path. But you might feel that you could offer so much more to your clients or patients by having these skill sets. All right, moving on. Finding peace through hypnotherapy. I mentioned my book, Peace Under All Circumstances. You can look on YouTube. I have some free resources there for that as well. A lot of what we do in the school when you get into advanced hypnotism starts with opening the heart work, inner child work, knowing what to do with your emotions. Most people are suppressing their emotions or acting out on their emotions. I mentioned to you, which I've always kept kind of secret out of respect for my dear teacher, Mickey or Michael Singer, studying with Mickey for like five years, listening to him lecture for three, three days a week, every week for years. The teachings are all about, really, I mean a lot of things, but how to deal with your emotions and about not suppressing your emotions and bottling them up. But nobody teaches us this stuff. We live with closed hearts and bottled up painful emotions that have been there for decades. It doesn't have to be that way. There is a path to liberating the human heart so it can feel real joy, sustained, like all the time. It doesn't have to go away. We don't have to be miserable and turning to medications and drugs and alcohol to feel good. There is so much bliss inside of you. That's the purpose of why I got into all this work. And I offer a nice handful of these Opening the Heart teachings. Um, this product is also available on our website if you just want for like $19.95 uh, just to hear these teachings before you might actually go into the school's training. Uh, you can find that on our school's shop. Learning hypnosis and forgiveness. Forgiveness work is crucial. It's very much a theme in A Course in Miracles. Any good therapy or hypnotherapy has to get into forgiveness, but what is it really? A lot of people don't understand it. They get into what's called forgiveness to destroy, which is things like, well, you're a bad person, and I'm a good person, that's why I forgive you. Or you're a bad person, and we're both bad people, so I forgive you. I know I'm supposed to forgive you, so I forgive you. I should forgive you. All right? Or people have said, I already forgave my dad. I hear that a lot in hypnotherapy. Clients come in like, why do I have to deal with my dad? I already forgave him when I worked with my talk therapist. The difference, though, quite often is when you do a hypnotic regression to a childhood memory, you find out you're actually still really upset with your parents, right? That they actually made mistakes. They hurt you. They lowered your self-esteem. Some parents actually did like horrendous things. Just because your conscious mind says, I forgive, it doesn't mean your subconscious has. And it doesn't mean you really know what forgiveness is just because you use the word. When true forgiveness occurs deep in the psyche, we shift from fear to love. We shift from anger to peace. We can move from resentment into true joy. If the path is based on more peace, more love, more joy, more bliss, more optimism, more everything good, <laughs> you, know, you want to move away from the horrors of the ego and into the beauty of spirit, forgiveness is the means. So we don't really introduce this. I mean, I just introduce it now, but we don't teach it till about 200 plus, 250 hours into our training because we get a lot of resistance to it. People believe deep in their mind that anger brings them what they want and that by justifying attack, they're protecting themselves. And people who teach forgiveness and gentleness and kindness could be seen as the enemy because we're taking away defenses. There are no valid defenses when they attack you. Our defenses attack ourselves, right? You keep your heart closed, you push people away, you live in your own inner misery and lack. Like, what kind of life is that? Forgiveness is the key to those shifts, but the thing that needs forgiveness, the memories, the emotions, the beliefs, you know, that part of the mind which needs forgiveness is usually very, very deeply buried in the subconscious. Miracles, like legitimate, real miracles, when somebody has rheumatoid arthritis and now they don't. In my private practice, I have seen cancer medically documented healed with hypnosis as an adjunct to the treatment. Rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, allergies, Crohn's disease, 
ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, have great success with multiple sclerosis. Um, some cancer of the blood, we had medically documented that was removed. I've actually seen hepatitis C medically documented removed from the bloodstream. How? Why? I promise you those are real stories. Why does that happen? How does that happen? The idea is that miracles are real, miracles are meant to be occurring, and when they're not occurring, something has gone wrong. Forgiveness is the means of the miracle. So for those of you who are of the Christian persuasion or like to kind of study, like, how did Christ, did Christ actually heal people? Maybe he did. Maybe that's actual history. I'm a religious scholar, so, you know, that's questionable, but can we learn from that? Whenever he healed someone, he would always say, your sins are forgiven you. Why? Why is that part of the healing equation, right? Why, when performing a miracle, forgiveness becomes the essence of it? Doesn't mean you have to be religious. I'm not here preaching, you know, Jesus to you. I'm just saying, if someone did something, like NLP says, neuro linguistic programming, so can you. But how did they do it? What were they doing? Um, this is where, again, I've dissected Course in Miracles, Christian Science, the work of Phineas Parker's Quinby, the founder of the New Thought Movement, Ernest Holmes, Science of Mind. These people have also asked those questions, and they've actually healed others. So how do we duplicate that? All I can say is forgiveness becomes a major part of that work in the movement towards peace. And inner peace is health. Peace is health. So our work is sacred, and if you're considering the school, if you only want a hypnosis training, covert hypnosis techniques to pick up women in bars, you know, to manipulate your family and friends, to think you're an amazing person, you're probably in the wrong place, right? If we're coming from ego, if we're being selfish, if we want to manipulate others, if we want to do stage shows to make everybody think we're amazing and laugh, we're probably, you're probably you'd be in the wrong place here. The work is sacred. It's about sitting down one-on-one -on -one with a client in your office, or you can do the sessions on Zoom as well. Um, sessions on Zoom, by the way, are probably just as effective and sometimes even better, actually, for many reasons. So you'll learn about that later. You can do our training online or a combination of online and house. So it can be 100% online or 70% online, 30% in house. We'll talk about that soon. Um, but basically, yeah, if you can do sessions from home or in your own office and it can be truly deep sacred work and that's what you want, then I would suggest you're in the right place. Choosing a quality education in hypnotherapy. We're going to go for about 10 more minutes. Um, we'll finish up this video when we come back. We can finish the video with Dorothy. I got more information to share with you about specifically going through this training and then I'd like to share with you some of a keynote speech I gave at a past conference, as I mentioned, we would do, so you can hear more about what is interpersonal hypnotherapy. So if you're choosing quality education hypnosis, what do you need to know? First of all, state licensure. I can't emphasize it enough. If you think you're comparing schools that are comparable, you must ask them, are you licensed by the Department of Education? If they say no, they're not a real school. Now I know people who do those trainings don't like what I just said, but go ask the Department of Education. So we're going to get into this in a moment. Hypnotherapy is a profession. It is a federally acknowledged profession. It's not like, oh, you're only a lay hypnotist. You're only just a hypnotist or a consulting hypnotist. If you go through a state licensed hypnotherapy school training, you are a hypnotherapist. Again, the federal government acknowledged that as a profession. If something is a profession, then the Department of Education says you must be licensed to train someone in that occupation. You can't give someone a degree in nursing, to be a doctor, to be a chiropractor, to be an acupuncturist, without being a state licensed school, at minimum, right? But in hypnosis, you can go pick up a book at Barnes & Noble, go order a book at Amazon and learn hypnosis and then claim to be a hypnotist. And honestly, nobody will stop you from doing that. However, if you go through a weekend hypnosis training, you know, 50 hours, 100 hours, through a non-licensed school, your diplomas aren't worth anything. Actually, they're not actually your diplomas. They can call them certifications, 
but where do they come from? Who's backing those? Now there are hypnotherapy associations and we own one of those. So an association, it's important to remember, is not a government organization. All right, the Department of Education is a government organization. The IAIH, right, our credentialing body, is not a government organization. It's essentially a corporation. All of the hypnotherapy organizations that give you a credential are really essentially just corporations. Maybe not for profits, I don't know their corporate structure, but they're not government agencies. There is no government agency that regulates the practice of hypnosis or hypnotherapy. There are laws in many states that govern hypnosis, but hypnosis training, anybody can train you in it. But if you want a legitimate diploma that the law actually will respect, in, for instance, Florida Hypnosis Law says that if a physician refers to you as a hypnotherapist, you must be considered a qualified practitioner. If that physician was to ask you, are you qualified? You can say, yes, I have legitimate state licensed diplomas. Cease and desist orders have gone out to schools over the years who are operating illegally. Okay, I'm not just saying like it's better. I'm saying if your school isn't licensed to train you in a career, it's illegal and it could be shut down. So you could be putting thousands of dollars into your training only to find out later you don't have a real diploma, you don't have a real certification, or the school actually, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, closes down or um, gets, gets closed down by the Department of Education. So, Gil Boyne with the American Council of Hypnotist Examiners really wanted his schools to be state licensed. Part of why we parted ways with them was because I realized after Gil's passing, a lot of the schools that they had certified were not actually licensed. And that was part of, that's not the standard we want to maintain. So we became licensed, um, and Gil Boyne is actually going to help me to get that started. And then I worked all through 2006, working with Department of Education, specifically the branch called the Commission for Independent Education, to be sure the school became state licensed. Um, we did that, we got that official launch in 2007 when we had our first class. We're also licensed for the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. They pay us to take people through uh, occupational training. They wouldn't do that if we didn't hold these high standards uh, and you might find that you qualify for that. So you can certainly look into the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation and then you actually have to say to them, you know, I'm recovering, we're going to get back into the job market, I was sick or whatnot, and is there money available? I want to go through the Institute of Interpersonal Hypnotherapy. They'll check the database and say, is this a licensed school? Okay, yes it is and then they go through their questionnaires or whatever and they can actually pay for your education. It doesn't happen much, you might not qualify, but my point here is the high standards that we hold make us qualified for them. We also work with the Florida Association of Post-Secondary Schools and Colleges or FAPS for a lot of our continuing education as a state licensed school we need to maintain those higher standards. And again these pictures, these are some of our graduates in the bottom left. All right, let's talk more about what it means to attend a state licensed school. We have to have in-depth training and oversight in admissions procedures. So you're talking to a professional admissions director when you call our school. Uh, you're talking to somebody who gets continuing education in that and who must abide by the laws <coughs> excuse me, of what it means to enroll somebody in a state licensed school career services for helping you to succeed in your career, mm -hmm. compliance with all the statutes and rules and laws that go along with being a licensed school. A state licensed school isn't just, we pay 300 bucks and they give us a piece of paper. It's many, many thousands of dollars every year and a lot of schools don't do it because it's so expensive. They check our finances every single year with a complete financial review that's one step removed from having to be audited every single year. If we don't have greater assets than liabilities, they will close down our school over time. They'll put us on a probation period to get our finances in shape. And if our finances aren't in shape, they'll close us down because we have to protect you as a student. The Department of Education itself has, you'll see here, train out agreements. If this school ever collapsed, if I ever took all your money and ran away to 
Siberia, <laughs> you would get your money back through the Department of Education. They have a train out agreement. They'll either try to get you into comparable hypnotherapy training, but in the state of Florida where a primary license is held, there aren't any right now. So all they can do is just tap into the fund that we have to pay into to actually give you your money back if this school ever really did you a major disservice like that. So you're protected in a state licensed school by the Department of Education itself. They make sure we have very high educational standards. We can't just make changes until we go through a major review board. Uh, they do in-house inspections every year. And I have to go, now it's online fortunately, but I, every year I have to go to a Department of Education meeting where there's colleges and universities, other career schools like ours. Schools bring their attorneys. It's a really big deal. They monitor our distance learning to be sure that we have the right platforms and we can deliver online education properly. Financial aid that you are protected if you take out some kind of loan with us to go through the training. Um, we'll talk about placement retention in a moment, on-site inspections, financial reviews, and the catalog itself, which we'll cover briefly, is very important when you're enrolling that you know exactly what you're getting into. You can never end up in a state licensed school and say they didn't promise what they said they would. It's impossible with the state licensed school. We make it very clear what you're getting in this school, um, how much it costs. It's all laid out in the catalog and all the policies and procedures. Okay, and then we're very much bound by their statutes and rules in how we conduct ourselves. All right, real quick, then we'll take a break from this video. Back in, oh, I think it was the 60s or 70s, some leaders in the field, Gil Boyne was one of those, decided we need to make this a profession. Massage is a profession, acupuncture is a profession, obviously being a doctor or a chiropractor is a profession, so why aren't we? So they petitioned the United States Department of Labor in a book that was called the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. That's no longer published, I'll give you the most current version. Um, but here they gave the definition of what a hypnotherapist does. We don't have to go into that now, we do that later in the training. But the point is, hypnotherapist is an actual occupation according to the federal government. The federal government stopped turning to the Dictionary of Occupational Titles and they started turning to ONET, the Occupational Informational Network. At that time, hypnotherapist was listed under Therapist's Other. But the government no longer turns to ONET anymore for that as far as I understand. So now they turn to the United States Department of Labor Bureau of Labor Statistics Instructional Program Data Listing. You'll see here the code for a hypnotherapist is 513603. If you check with the Department of Education about our school's license number, that number is actually embedded in there, uh, acknowledging this is the federal level of occupation, this is the state level of granting the license to train people in this occupation. There are very few state licensed hypnotherapy schools and again I can't encourage you enough please don't support schools or associations that don't require state licensure. We're right there listed with other occupations like acupuncture, homeopathic medicine, massage, yoga teacher, health professions and related clinical sciences whatever that means. Here's the link if you want to check it out I know you can click on it but I did want to cite the sources. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got two more videos to watch. We've got to finish up this PowerPoint. And essentially, we're just moving you through a 500-hour training.